going on to our first module here, um, let's talk about um, variables and data and, 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 and simple data types. So what I'm going to talk about first are variables. I'm going to talk about once you put something in a variable, how do you see what's there when you're working interactively? Um, what types of variables Python has? I'll talk about one special type called none and a little bit about type conversion. Okay, so what's a variable? Um, a variable is just simp in Python is just simply a name that we attach to something. Okay, um, you don't have to declare variables; you just use them. Um, if you've worked in any other language, you'll be used to the idea that Python variable names um, can be upper and lowercase letters. Uppercase and lowercase letters, though, are different. No symbols are allowed in a, Pyth in, in a Python variable name, with the exception of an underscore. Um, variable names must start with a letter. Variable names are case sensitive. So my var with capitalized letters and my var without capitalized letters are different, represent different variables. And um, you can make your variable names as long as you want them to be. And there is somebody who did a test to see how long he could um, make his variable names in Python. And the answer was that it was limited by his computer memory. <laughs> um, I would say that variable names are limited by sanity. Um, okay. Um, if you, there are certain words that Python reserves for its own use. And they're pretty much rational things like you don't want a variable called if, because then it's going to be confusing when you, you when we get to how you write an if statement. Um, there are, I think, there's something like 40 special words that you can't use for a variable, um, and that's they're enumerated in this book. So how do you put a variable? How do you associate a value with a variable? Well, you use the equal sign. So there are three examples down here. Um, and you'll notice I've used the same variable each time. Oops, it helps if you point it at the screen. Here I've defined a to be equal to this is a string. Then I went back. Sorry, I'm not going to be able to go to that one. Um, was it canceled? Oh, OK. Well, I guess I'm definitely not going to that. All right. Um, here I've taken the same variable. Now I've stuck in a value of 1.1. OK. Um, or I can stick in a value of 1. You'll notice that I've never told Python what kind of value is in the variable. Okay. Um, variables don't have types. Okay. This is a string. This is a floating point number. This is an integer. I can use the same variable for any of them. Values have types, but the, the variable itself doesn't. Um, Okay, so how do we do this? Well, if we go to the, um, if we if we want to see what's inside a variable, if we are in an interactive shell, for example, by typing IPython or Python, and we type the variable, it comes back with the um, contents of that variable. Okay, if you're working in a script and you want to see the contents of the variable, then you need to print it. So either of these will work. What's the difference here? Why is this? I've given it 1.1, and it comes back with something that's not exactly 1.1. Why is that? Well, it turns out that um, floating point numbers are represented in, in um, exponential binary. And you can't represent a tenth exactly in binary. So this is pretty close. Although, actually, I'm told that in, in the next version of Python, Python 3, it will get that exactly right. And if you really do care about the difference between these two numbers, there is a package in Python that allows you to specify the number of significant digits you want your calculation carried out to. And it will carry it out to that. Diff to that. And it also there's, there's a num bunch of different things. We'll come back to that when I talk about packages. But um, Now, here is probably the biggest difference between Python 2 and Python 3. 
Um, and there's code that will make the conversion for you. Um, so if you write something in Python 2 and you later want it in Python 3, you can run it through a processor that will make this change for you. But the print statement is different. This will not work in Python 3. In Python 3, you need to say print with parentheses around it. Why they made that change? Well, I wish they hadn't, but there are, are good reasons for it, but I wouldn't, but not my, not my preference. So that's the first gotcha between Python 2 and Python 3, and it's actually the biggest. Um, so I said that variables aren't typed, but the contents is, values are typed. What if you want to know what the type of a variable is? Well, there's a nice little function called type that will tell us what the contents of a variable type is. So here I've defined a to be a string, b to be an integer, c to be a um, floating number. And if I ask for the type of each of these, it comes back and tells me a is a string, b is an integer, and c is a float. Now, um, note um, that if I put something in quotes, that's a different type. Here I've said d is a string that happens to contain four letters, a, a one, a decimal point, and two zeros, and that's a string. And what I probably should have put down is that there's a very easy way to convert that string into a number should you want it. Actually, I might even be on the next slide. Um, no, I didn't. It's not, I guess. Um, there are lots of data types, simple ones. We have logical ones, Boolean. So um, a, um, a Boolean value is either going to be true or false. And notice that these words are capitalized. They don't work if they're not capitalized. Also note there are no quotes. Um, we've seen integer. We've seen floats. We've seen strings. Um, if you want a complex value, there's two ways to write this, actually. But I think this is the easier of the two. So this is. Um, 1 plus 2 times i. Although if Python types it out, it'll say it'll show it as j rather than i. Um, there are other types of data, for data types you can use. You can have fixed precision decimal, which I mentioned. You can work with, you can work with fractions. If you want 1 over 3 to be exactly 1 over 3 and not 3.3333 and stopping somewhere, you can work with a f you can declare something as a fraction, and you can also you work with what are called longs, which are um, integers with an infinite number of digits. So you're not limited to two to the thirty-two if you want to work with long, very long integers. You would say long followed by the number, okay? And then there are rules. So if you do multiplication of a long by a long, it gives you back a long. <laughs> um, if you're interested in if you're interested in that, um, you know, look up look up the module. I haven't had a need for it. Um, let's see. Strings are lots of ways you you'll find that you work with strings a lot in Python. There are lots of ways to code strings. You can use um, single quotes as I did here. You can use double quotes. If you want to put quotes within quotes, the easiest way is to just use the opposite flavor. You can also stick a backslash in front. If you want to specify a string that spans lines, here's an example where I've typed in. You can put three quotes of either type, no spaces between them, and you can start right after it or you can start on the next line. Um, and everything you put in from that point on will be inside this quote, in, in inside, this, inside this string, until you terminate it. So here, and I've got this, th it, it showed me what I defined. I defined a string, and this backslash n means a new line. So you, start, you can see I started with a new line, and there's a new line at the end, and that's, I've got them there. Okay. So um, lots of ways to put in quotes, quote to, to define strings. 
okay? Um, and if that wasn't enough, if you want to, to you can just simply put multiple strings on a line as I've done up here. So here's a string, A followed by a space, another string with the word string in it. Here I've switched to using double quotes. And since and, and there's nothing between them. When it sees two strings, one right after the other, it just simply concatenates them. So you end up with one string out of that. Um, we'll come back to what this, this, to what this is. Um, but you don't get the same thing if you use commas between them. Um, if you have a long string and you don't want those new lines in it, if you use parentheses, like I've done here, you can break this over multiple lines, and it will recognize that hey, I've, this has got to be. Th th this is, you know, I've got an open parenthesis. I've got to keep looking. Everything's going to be part of the same line effectively, until I get my close parenthesis. Okay, I think that's it. Oh yeah, first, first, first exposure to how Python handles objects. Okay. If you design a, de define a string variable, you get a whole bunch of routines. There's actually more than this, but these are the ones you might use that are attached to that string variable. Okay, so here I define a string variable, and attached to it is this function upper. So if I type s dot upper, and then just parentheses to say that I'm calling a function. I'm calling a function that's attached to the string variable. Upper gives me back the same string, but now in uppercase letters. Um, another routine that's in this list, capitalize, will capitalize the first letter. Here, I'm calling a function, and I'm passing it something. So S starts with this, comes back as true. Why? because it starts with the letter THIS. If I ask, does S start with IS, the answer is false. This function find, though, will search through the string, and it will tell me the starting number of the character that matches it. So S.find IS comes back. This is character 0. That's character 1. Tells me the I for IS starts at character 2. So just by, def def by, rec by, by defining a variable, it gets a type. Carried with that type is a, um, is a, um, a y you get routines that are associated with that. Um, in object and oriented programming, those are called methods. I will probably try to refer to them mostly as functions till we get into object-oriented programming. Um, and you even get something else, which is that different types will associate themselves with different operators. So this, the, the string type knows what to do with plus when you have two strings. In this case, I have three strings. So I've taken S, I've capitalized it, I've taken another, I'm adding to that a string that contains a period and a space, and then another string. And you can see that I get out one long string because the plus operation on strings means add them together, concatenate them. All right. Yes? Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, yes, you can do, yes, there's, there's, there's a, uh, let me see if I can, I, I'll, I'll try to remember to get back to that. Um, yeah, sure, please. Mm -hmm. Boy, that's a good question. I don't know. It it does it does do a lot of uh, it does do an awful lot of 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 guiding you. Um, I don't know. I don't remember the details of how it works. But if you look at P Peach Emian's presentation, then. Um, if you uh, you should be able to get to it, but if you can't, let me know and I'll I'll get it to you. <sighs> mm -hmm. Um, 
Certainly IPython, if you type dot in a, spa in a tab, it will come back and tell you there is, uh, um, you know, 72, 72 things that com possible completions. Do you want to see them all? Um, so yeah, that, that, that's there. I, 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 I believe that's the case in Wingware and, and, and in probably Idle as well, but I just, I, um, the only one that I use with any regularity is IPython, and I would say that that's a weakness, not a strength. Not a, certainly not a recommendation. Okay, this one's a little weird. There is a data type called none. Why is that there? Well, there are times when you want to work with something that uh, um, where the you want it to have a null value. Okay, um, and notice none again is cap first letters capitalized, no quotes. Um, may not make sense in this context, but we'll see where none makes is used. And it's it used quite a bit, actually. So let's say, um, I'm not sure this is true for that find command where we were finding letters, but if we tried to find a string that wasn't there, a common way of indicating that the string isn't, th that, that, that there's no match, would be to return a value of none. Um, okay. All right. Conversion between data types. A lot of times, conversion just happens automatically. If you add an integer and a float, you get a float. But if you specifically want to get a float from an integer, you can ask for it. Um, and if you ask to get an integer from a float, it's obviously it's got to truncate it or do something. Round, could either round it or truncate it. It truncates it. If you ask for an, the integer associated with a complex variable, you can't get it because it doesn't know which component to use. If I ask, but if I tag dot real onto my complex number, it gives me the real component, or if I ask for imaginary, it will give me the imaginary component. I can ask for an integer, the integer of that. Um, you'll find you don't use that too much. Um, one thing you can do that's a, 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 that might be of interest is you can say float followed by a string, character string, and it will try to interpret it as a character, it, a, as a number. Okay. Um, so let's give you some homework. This you can get these slides off 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 of um, the Python Interest Group website. So I've given you three variables. What's the difference between them? I've asked what's the difference between those strings, and um, I hope it's still slide number nine. I might have added. Let me just check on that. Yeah, where can you find? Actually, it might be slide ten now. But anyway, no, it's slide nine. Where do you find? Where would you find information on the um, methods or the functions that are defined here? So that's something to think about. Okay. So let me take a quick interlude and just show you. Um, so if I define a string, I do s dot in IPython, it comes back with a list of all the string of all the string types that are there. Um, okay. And if I say s equals 1.01, oops, um, that's still a string, so I can still do s upper. Um, and I can say let's float, and now that's a float, so it's interpreted for me. And I'm not sure what happens if I ask for an int. You can't convert it to an int. Although interestingly enough, if I really want an int, I can do this. Oops, I left out a parenthesis there. 